I'll show the features and then I'll show how to make one. If you... The fence is adjustable and locks in place with these bolts. You can attach a clamp to the fence trap. You can attach a clamp to the base and they tighten in with a bolt. These clamps are nice because you can have a range of thickness without adjusting the clamp and you get about the same clamping pressure. You don't have to adjust this screw every time. To hold down thick pieces of wood, the clamp is placed on a block and the bolt goes through the block into the track. You can set a stop block to a mark on the ruler. In this case I've set it to 12 inches. Then swing the table to align with the center of the bit. Lock the table in position and then move the stop block to whatever distance you want. Say 10 inches, which is 2 inches less than 12. Then if I put a piece of wood against the stop block, I'll know that I'm going to drill the hole 2 inches from the end of the piece of wood. If I want to drill a row of holes, I can just keep moving the stop block along at whatever pitch of the holes that I want. Most drill press tables that you can buy are 24 inches wide and 12 inches deep. Woodpeckers makes their table 24 by 16. Um, 16 seemed a little bit far out for me when I placed it on the drill press, kind of felt like my stomach was hitting it, so I went for 24 by 14. Instead of cutting dados to receive the track, I just have some half inch MDF material, which is the same height as the track, and then screw the MDF to the base, and after that's done, I'll install the tracks and they'll be a perfect fit. This MDF material is just a couple of thousandths of an inch higher than the track, which is okay. If it was the other way around, if the material was thick lower, that'd be a problem because then you'd be rocking on the track. And in that case, I'd slip a piece of paper between the MDF and the base before I screwed it down. This center piece is where the drill will go into. So I want to make it so that I can flip it around when it kind of gets worn out to wear out the other area. And that means I want the screws in the corners to be all exactly the same so that the holes underneath line up. Here's a trick for getting all the holes in the exact same position. I got some uh, stops. I position them so that I get the first hole where I want it. And I want to always keep the end of this board against this piece and the length of the board against that piece. So to deal with this hole, I can't simply rotate. I've got to flip. I've placed the tracks and the pieces of MDF on the table so that they're loose. Then I'll line them up to the ends and with a straight edge line them up this way. And when everything feels square, clamp in place. Before I secure these pieces, I'll put in the carriage bolts that will be used to secure the table to the uh, metal table of the drill press. The carriage bolts have a square piece here that will dig into the wood so that it doesn't spin when you tighten them up. If it does spin, then I would put a little epoxy to hold them in there. I'll pull them in the rest of the way with a wrench and nut, and I'm feeling underneath with a ruler to see when I've uh, cleared the surface. It also kind of hits a, a limit there. So there it is, sunk in. These pieces go on the bottom, and they'll grip the uh, iron table of the, of the drill press. Now I can just build out from that center piece, keeping these edges even. Now the T-track can be drilled and screwed in. If you want to countersink the holes in this extrusion, you'll need a countersink bit that is no more than 8 millimeters in diameter. That's a little less than 3 8 inch. And that'll just fit in there. This is one I found on Amazon. So there's the base completed with the brackets. That'll just slide on there and tighten up the uh, knobs. I'll use this piece of wood for the fence and to make that fence less likely to warp or twist I'm gonna cut it by this dotted line and after I've cut it I'll flip one of the pieces around and that'll show that the arrows are all pointing in opposite directions so that any tendency to um, warp will be counteracted by the other piece.
So now when I flip one piece around and glue those back together, circle arrows are in the opposite direction. So there's the fence. It's two and three quarter inches high and I used an 80 millimeter long bolt. Now I got this T-track with a scale. The way the measuring tape came is they intended it to be mounted this way, but I think it's better to mount it this way so that if I have a shallow uh, piece of wood, I can move it along the scale. And rather than if, if it was this way, the scale would be too high. So what I did was I slid the plastic ruler out, flipped it over and slid it back in. So the numbers are right side up. So now all I'll do is cut a half inch deep dado in there and uh, screw that in. With the fence at the back of the table, I am limited to a little over four inches from the fence to the center of the bit. The reason I don't have this fence back against the post is I want to be able to turn the crank easily without hitting the table. And towards that end, I've rounded this edge so that I don't scrape my knuckles on a sharp edge. However, if I really need the extra space, I can loosen the knobs down here, slide it all the way back, and then I get a little over six inches from the fence to the center of the bit. On this edge of the fence, I cut a small bevel so that if there's a little bit of sawdust, it won't prevent the material from butting up tight against the fence. Checking that the fence is square to the table. Hey, I've got a drill bit that I know is straight. It doesn't wobble. And I've moved the fence up to it and I can see that it, it's touching exactly the same at the top as at the bottom. So that tells me that the whole system, the drill press and the table, are square. And we can also check in this direction. And I know this piece of wood is square. So that comes up snug to the bit at top and bottom. I've got the table lined up with the center of the spindle. And that lines up with the 12 inch mark on my fence scale. This is a Bessie toggle clamp. They come in a variety of configurations. There's a hole that'll take an eight millimeter bolt, a metric eight millimeter bolt that's one centimeter long. I got these 30 M8 T-nuts. Two styles I found, one has a ball bearing on a spring. The other has a leaf spring. The leaf spring ones don't fit very good in the track. I had to grind them and I had to break the spring off, so don't bother with them. The ball is okay, but unless the screws are fully countersunk, it'll catch on the screws, which is annoying, and doesn't really serve any purpose. Held that against the grinder, popped the ball out. I chose a width of eight inches for this uh, centerpiece of MDF, and that allows me to come in quite close to the center so that if I'm trying to clamp a small piece onto the table, I can reach it. And I could have one of these on each side to hold it down securely. On the left is the PowerTech heavy duty three quarter inch by one half inch. On the right is the Incra, also half inch high by three quarter inch wide. Their cross sectional profile is very similar. They both accept 30 M8 T-nut. If you want to use these kind of clamps from your track saw, then the power tech is the better choice because they'll slip right in. Whereas on the Incra, this will only go in part way. And so you'd have to do some filing on the edge there. Similar for the micro jig clamps on the power tech, they go in nicely. On the Incra, they'll go in, but they still hit there. I can't see much use for this type of clamp on the drill press table, but on another jig it might be useful and so then the power tech would be a better choice.